mainly just to help keep the algorithm going. If you guys would like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, just uh, spread the word about the channel. We're growing a little. We're growing little by little, but I always would. I uh, you know I figured I'd at least try to let you guys know. I'm tired. I'm sorry if I'm rambling already. But uh, there's a lot to talk about. We have that enhanced risk, and we now have two enhanced risk areas that we, we're talking about for tonight. There's already been a, a lot of tornadic activity. As far as it stands right now, we've had zero tornado reports, but there's been tornado warnings over in uh, St. Louis, and this weather is moving off to the east. And then, of course, we have the enhanced risk area that we touched on yesterday up towards the Northern Plains and the Great Plains region. Well, not the Northern Great Plains, I should say, excuse me, and the Great Lakes region. We also have a multitude of severe thunderstorm watches. A lot of hail reports today, by the way. So far, we're sitting at 127. Ten of those have been above two inches in diameter. So far, no winds greater than 65 knots, thankfully. Let's hope this continues into the into the uh, latter half of the evening and into the overnight. So let's. Uh, so we had talked about that. We're gonna talk. Look at Friday's threat a little bit more. We're gonna. Uh, don't worry. We will take a look at what the radar could look like tonight over our primary areas of interest. But we're mainly gonna be moving on to tomorrow's threat. We have two slight risk areas now. We have a slight risk that includes Oklahoma City and Norman, pushes south towards Fort Sill and Wichita Falls. Then we have a marginal risk that stretches all the way from the Texas-Mexico border, including areas like San Antonio and Austin, Waco, Fort Worth, Dallas, you guys are included. And pretty much for areas in between all the way up towards the Great Lakes and maybe even the Canadian border. And then we have enough, then here's our second slight risk area right to the west of Detroit, and then pretty much enco encompassing almost the entire state of Michigan. And then our slight risk, of course, includes the areas of Chicago, Fort Wayne, Milwaukee, Peoria, Springfield, Hannibal, well, both Springfields, both Springfield, Illinois, and Springfield, Missouri. And then we have a secondary slight risk area right here that needs to be watched real close too. This includes Philadelphia, Baltimore, and areas to the east of Pittsburgh. Anywhere else, we're just looking at a general thunderstorm threat. But let's look at the hazard types. We'll look at hail, and of course, our slight risk areas have 15%, and here's our 5% right here. Look at the wind, same thing. This is where things get interesting though. In the slight risk area down here, there's not really much of a tornado threat, but up here there's a 5% chance of a tornado threat. Especially to the uh, north and west of uh, Detroit here, especially towards northern Michigan. You guys might want to be uh, a little bit more careful come tomorrow when it comes to the weather. And then we do have a cheeky little 2% area right here around Philadelphia and Baltimore. This is the same. This is most likely going to be coming from the same storm system that we're seeing over in the, um, excuse me, over in the, over in the uh, northern plains and the Great Lakes, affecting uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin right now. So we'll have to take that. We'll have to take a close watch on that. Take a quick look at day three's threat. This is going into Saturday. It's a marginal risk. I do think this has room to be upgraded. But as you can see, it's a very large area. Stretches all the way from Maine to Texas, San Antonio. And I can't tell the full name of that city because it's cut off halfway. But areas in between, you have a small chance for severe weather. Somewhere in there, I think there could be an upgrade. I don't know exactly where right now. I'll be taking a closer look at that tomorrow. And then on days uh, four through eight, we have one more day of expected severe weather right around the Northeast, including uh, most almost all of New York and, uh, and the uh, smaller states like, um, I can't even remember what these are. I'm drawing a, br I'm drawing a blank. Looks like uh, New Hampshire and um, 
I gotta go back. This goes from Maine all the way towards uh, the western parts of New York, towards the uh, Great Lakes. And then on day five, we finally get a break. Then day six through eight, predictability too low. So you get one little breath of fresh air, and then we're right back into the fire possibly again. Let's hope this changes. But let's take a look at the HRRR, see what the radar looks like tonight. Also, there is a little bit of snow to be expected on the backside of this storm system here that we're seeing pop off the severe weather to the north of it. It's a pretty odd look, by the way. But let's move this along. This kind of meanders over the Great Plains, and then this will trigger some severe weather tomorrow. Then we have another low that pops up, and this will trigger greater severe weather, a uh, slightly greater severe weather threat around the southern plains tomorrow evening. Meanwhile, our storms are starting to fire off here. And this is more towards that uh, that side, that uh, sector of the low that I've always talked about, that south, that southeastern sector. So could be a line of storms and a little bit of tornadic, tornadic activity to go with it. We'll take a little bit more of an in-depth look with the NAM. So move up to about 19 hours out, about 24 hours out from now. Here we go. This is what our uh, this is what our storm system's looking like. Nam kind of has a little bit more of a uh, stronger signal for snow around uh, Denver, especially. You could get some heavy snow out of this. All in the meanwhile, towards the late evening hours, our line of storms really pops up here. But earlier in the evening, that's when our threat kicks in for Michigan. We see a nice little line of storms develop into the overnight hours around the uh, Ozarks. It's mainly looking like a severe threat. Definitely has the linear look to it. No surprises there. And then our low pressure is scooting off to the east. It may cause a little bit more unsettled weather. NAM isn't giving this too much props. Meanwhile, to the south and east, we have a little bit of uh, Gulf moisture coming into play ahead of this line of storms and you may get some pop-up storms Sunday or Saturday night into Sunday and then this main line is expected to continue to push off to the east so that could make for an interesting day Sunday afternoon especially towards the southeast Mississippi Alabama and Georgia even and then we'll have to watch this area Sunday for severe weather let's take a look at that low-level jet and uh, get an idea of what we could have going on come tomorrow. There was a 5% chance of a tornado threat here. Let's take a look at that, see what kind of validity we might have with that. Let me even look at the uh, surface base cape. And I mean, when we look at the low level jet, we do see areas of 50, 55, even from the looks of it, a couple of 60, maybe even 65 knots. So. It's not like our low our low level jet's just stagnant. It's definitely uh, got a little potency with it. Over towards uh, Oklahoma and Texas, it's not as impressive, but it's not zero. I wouldn't say that this is zero either. We we see a little small area here where it's uh, about maybe about forty, closing in on forty five knots. That's about the minimum of what you would look for when it comes to any sort of tornadic activity. We're going to have to look at the uh, surface base cape in order to make sure we're on point here. But we look into Saturday, things definitely seem to die down. Not too much going on here. May we see this small little area right here. We'll have to see if that remains in tomorrow's video or um, Saturday morning. If this does, then I might watch this area around uh, Illinois and uh, Indiana into the overnight hours and then this low level jet looks like it tries to march its way off to the northeast so we'll have to keep an eye on that might be a line of strong storms still going into Sunday morning as well could keep things a little bit more interesting but that's pretty much it there let's get a look at the surface base cape if it'll load Uh, 
Oops, might have hit, might have hit the wrong thing here. Just give me a moment. Okay, so we're. This is a map I'm not quite used to, but this is a interesting one little little map here because this kind of shows where. This kind of shows a little bit of everything. I don't really like showing you guys this map. If you do like this map, give me some likes or hit me up in the comments and I might use it more. Basically what this is showing is uh, when's at the lower levels and the higher levels of the atmosphere or in the highest levels of the atmosphere as well. Showing a wind gust at the surface and we're also showing a surface based cape. So <clears throat> the surface based cape is the uh, one with the lower transparency here. But uh, the values are all the same. The brighter the colors usually means the higher the cape, which is what you don't want if you're looking for if you're not looking for severe weather. So look, so we have a good bit of cape available right now around these regions, especially towards uh, Kentucky right now. But overnight, the uh, the atmosphere really starts to destabilize. And Friday, things really start to pick up around Michigan, especially into the uh, late afternoon hour. So I'm, I'm kind of concerned about this area. And then you can see these little, uh, so, we, so we can see this little red barb right here going this way, and we see this little black barb going this way. That definitely has the look of directional shear. Directional shear is something that you would look for in the development of tornadoes. There's two types of shear. There's speed shear and directional shear, and it looks like we have a decent bit of directional. And we did, and from the looks of it, there is speed shear as well. So we're gonna have to be really watchful of this area. Saturday, our area of interest. There's plenty of cape there, and there is some uh, shear, but it's it didn't seem quite as impressive. There is directional shear, but there's not speed shear, so you don't have both to work with this time. But it looks like we get a pretty good bit of um, directional and maybe even some speed shear to, on a Sunday around the northeast. So I'm thinking this will be a line of storms that po tries to pop through here, but wouldn't rule out a tornado. But the Cape definitely looks like it's uh, sufficient for some severe thunderstorms. And over towards the Gulf states, we I talked about there being an area of interest as far as like just summertime or general thunderstorms could have one that pulses severe because when you have a moisture when you have moisture content as rich as what you would get in the gulf anything can happen so now we're going to of course take one last look we're going to take a look at the tropics here and for the most part things have been quiet again until we look late into this model run here from the GFS this is very far out and this is kind of a bullish look. I don't know why the GFS has been having looks like these lately, almost as if they're trying to scare people. But at the same time, I don't know what it is they're picking up on, but look at this right here. It's the same look as that last little system they had popping up. They have this going through Cuba and then pushing towards Florida. But look how far out we are in the model run. I don't know why they keep having that. I mean. I've been hearing some stuff about this little uh, channel here in the Gulf starting to really be they're really anticipating that becoming a hotbed of activity soon I just don't know how soon I don't know if it'll be this soon and I'm kind of hoping not because this is a big storm and this will cause a lot of trouble because I mean look at that look at how I mean to put it into perspective for you, what we're looking at is the uh, cloud tops. And the colder the cloud tops, the taller the um, clouds are. And usually with thunderstorms, with the really strong thunderstorms, these cloud tops get to about 50,000 feet plus or 40, 50,000 feet plus, And the temperature gets really cold. And we're sitting at about 30 degrees below zero on this, mo on this model here towards the end. So it, it, it's a bit concerning, but like I said, this is so far out. We've, I've literally shown you several instances where we've seen a run like this far out, like this, this far out, and it's turned 
itself on its head. So we'll have to take this with a grain of salt, but we'll also have to watch it because that doesn't mean because this means that the chance of something like this happening isn't zero. But of course, I'll be more than willing to guide you guys along the way if you let if you let me. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you for you with this video tonight. I'll be uh course posting a weekend forecast tomorrow but until then this has been ty your metalhead weatherman i will see you guys tomorrow have a good night and stay safe and if you're in those uh enhanced risk areas for tonight